Hi there. It's Friday, March 29th. A good Friday. And we are in Judges 1 and 2 today and are through the Bible in one year. We are day 89. <clears throat> so we're getting there. We're starting a brand new book. Let's jump over there and we'll get into it. Israel's failure to complete the conquest of Canaan. After the death of Joshua and the people, the people of the Israel inquired the Lord, who shall go up first for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? The Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have given the land into his hand. And Judah said to Simeon, his brother, come up with me into the territory allotted to me that we may fight against the Canaanites. And I likewise will go with you into the territory allotted to you. So Simeon went with him. Then Judah went up, <clears throat> and the Lord gave the Canaanites and the Pezzarites into their hand, and they defeated 10,000 of them at Bezek. They came up upon, oh wow, that word, at, at Bezek, and fought against him, and defeated the Canaanites and the Pezzarites. At Donai Bezek, wow, fled, but they pursued him and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. Wow. And I, I, that guy said, 70 kings with their thumbs and their great toes cut off used to pick used to pick up scraps under my table as I have done. So God has requited, requited me. And they brought him to Jerusalem and he died there. <laughs> your thumbs and your big toes. Wow, crazy, huh? And then the men of Judah fought against Jerusalem. The men of Judah fought against Jerusalem and took it and smote it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. And afterward, the men of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites who dwelt in the hill country in the Negeb, and in the lowland, and Judah went against the Canaanites who dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron was formerly that name, and they defeated Sheshai and Ahibam and Talmehai. Wow. From there they went against the inhabitants of Deborah. The name of the Deborah was formerly Kiriath Shepher. And Caleb said, Who attacks Kiriath Shepher and takes it? I will give him. Him, Ashkai, my daughter, as, as wife. And and this guy, son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it, and he gave him Ashkai, his daughter, as his wife. When she came to him, she urged him to ask her father for a field, and she alighted from her ass, and Caleb said to her, What do you wish? And she said to him, Give me a present, since you have set me in the land of Negalo. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. And the descendants of the Kenite, Moses, Moses' father-in-law, went up with the people of Judah from the city of Palms into the wilderness of Judah, which lies in the Negev near Egad. And they went to settle, and went and settled with the people. And Judah went with Simeon, his brother, and they defeated the Canaanites who inhabited Zephath and utterly destroyed it. So the name of the city was called Hormah. Judah also took Gaza with its territory, and Ashkelon with its territory, and Ekron with its territory, and the Lord was with Judah, and he took possession of the hill country, but he could not drive out the inhabitants of the plain, because they had chariots of iron. And Hebron was also given to Caleb, and Moses had said, as Moses had said, and he drove out from the three sons, drove, and he drove out from it three sons of Anak. The people of Benjamin did not Drive out the Jebusites who dwelt in Jerusalem. So the Jebusites have dwelt with people of Benjamin in Jerusalem to this day. Which is whatever this is written, right? The house of Joseph also went up against Bethel, and the Lord was with them. And the house of Joseph sent a spy out to Bethel. Now that was in the city, the name was formerly Luz. And the spy saw a man coming out of the city, and they said to him, Pray, show us the way into the city, and we will deal kindly with you. And he showed them the way into the city, and they smote the city with the edge of the sword. But they let the man and, his fa and all his family go. And the man went to the land of the Hittites, and built the city, and called it name Luz. It, that is his name to this day. Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth, of Beth Sheehan and its villages, or Taglan and its villages, or the inhabitants of Dor and its villages, or the inhabitants of Bevan and its villages, the inhabitants of Megiddo and its villages, but the Canaanites persisted in dwelling in that land. When Israel grew strong, they put the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not utterly drive them out. Are you getting all these names? I'm not. Okay, so. And Ephraim did not drive out the Canaanites who dwelt in Gezar, but the Canaanites dwelt in Gezar among them. 
Zebulon did not drive out the inhabitants of Kitron or the inhabitants of Nahal, but the Canaanites dwelt among them and became subject to forced labor. <clears throat> Asher did not drive out the inhabitants of Echo or the inhabitants of Sidon or Ahab or Exab or Exab or Apec or Rebop. <laughs> yeah. But the Asherites dwelt among the Canaanites and the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out. Naphtali did not drive out the inhabitants of Bermashemashes or, or the inhabitants of Bereneth and dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of, of Bershemesh and Benamedda became subject to forced labor for them. Slaves. The Amorites pressed the Danites back into the hill country, for they did not allow them to come down to the plain. The Amorites persisted in dwelling in the Harhirs, in Ajalon and Shebelim, but, but the hand of the house of Joseph rested heavily upon them, and they became subject to forced labor. And the border of the Amorites ran from the Askin of Akabram to the Shelah and upward. Man, I don't know any of this stuff. Israel's disobedience. Now the angel of the Lord went up to Gilgal from Bochum, and he said, I brought you from Egypt and brought you into the land which I swore to give your fathers. I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall break down their altars, but you have not obeyed my command. What is this you have done? So now I say, I will drive them out before you, but they shall become adversaries to you, and their God shall bear, be a snare to you. When the angel of the Lord spoke these words, all the people of Israel, <clears throat> to all the people of Israel, the people lifted up their voices and wept, and they called the name of the place Bochim, and they sacrificed there to the Lord. Death of Joshua. When Joshua dismissed the people, the people of Israel went each to his inheritance to take possession of the land, and the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen the great work in which the Lord had done for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110 years. And they buried him within the bounds of his inheritance at that place in the hill country of Ephraim, north of the mountain of Gash. And all that generation also were gathered to their fathers, and there, and there arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord or the work with which he had done for Israel. <coughs> So this is probably generations and generations, a hundred years have passed, right? Israel's unfaithfulness. And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. And they forsook the Lord, the God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt. They weren't, <clears throat> they weren't after other gods. From They went after other gods from among the gods of the peoples who were around about them and bowed down to them and they provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served the Baals and the Ashtaroth. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he gave them over to plunders, who plundered them and who sold them into power of their enemies round about so that they could no longer withstand their enemies. Whenever they marched out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had warned, and as the Lord had sworn to them, and they were, and they were in sore straits. Bad condition, the Lord raised up judges who saved them out of the power of those who plundered them, and yet they did not listen to their judges, for they played the for they played the harlot after other gods and bowed down to them, and they soon turned aside from the way which their fathers had walked and who had obeyed the commandments of the Lord. And they did not do so. Whenever the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was the judge, and he saved them from the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge, for the Lord was moved to pity by their groaning, because of those who afflicted and oppressed them. But whenever the judge died, they turned back and behaved worse than their fathers, going after God, serving them and bowing down to them. They did not drop any of their practices or their stubborn ways. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he said, Because his people have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not obeyed my voice, I will not henceforth drive out before them any of the nations that Joshua left when he died, that by them I may test Israel whether they will take care and to walk in the way of the Lord as their fathers did or not. So the Lord let those nations not driving them out at once, and he did not give them into the power of Joshua. So, there you go. See, they're already in trouble. And, I mean, years and years and years have passed, okay? They lived many years. and These are actually the children of all the people that fought these wars and won this land. And, but they told them, you know, they told them it would happen. So... 
And God was right. He always is. Uh -huh. So tomorrow, nations remaining in the land, Othniel, Ehud, Shamgar, Deborah, and Barak. The Song of Deborah. Wow, looks like a long one tomorrow, huh? Wow, look at that song. Holy mackerel. So, there you have it. That's through the Bible in one year, day 89. And we're... <coughs> We'll just keep doing this and keep doing this. Have a good day. Remember, it's Good Friday, the day everything changed, the most important day in the history of the world. Got that? So, praise God. Thank Jesus. See you later.